In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created. Let us pray. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of thy faithful, grant us by the same Holy Spirit to be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay. Today is February 23, 2021. Tuesday. Um, it's the birthday of great-grandpa Aaron, our... Uh, Family patriarch, whose picture you see right there. <laughs> uh, he was a war hero, hero of uh, both the First and the Second World War, um, a Purple Heart uh, awardee, and uh, a recipient also of the Congressional Medal of Honor. No, Congressional Medal, not the Congressional Medal of Honor, Congressional Medal. Um, anyway, uh, let's pray especially for the soul of Grandpa Aaron today, as we remember him at Mass and in the Rosary and in our other prayers, okay? So today, we are going to comment on the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 6, verses 7 to 15. This is the, uh, the episode in the life of our Lord and the disciples and the apostles where he teaches them how to pray the Our Father. Okay, so let's listen. Jesus said to his disciples, <clears throat> In praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. For your Father knows <clears throat> Your father knows what you need before you ask him. <clears throat> Let's pause for a moment here and, and listen to what our Lord says again. In praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. What is our Lord trying to tell us here? He's trying to tell us that when we pray, when we talk to God, when we converse with God, we have to mean what we say. Praying is not a matter of just babbling, parroting uh, words that don't mean anything to us. Okay? Now that becomes especially true when we pray the vocal prayers. We have to try to mean what we say. The vocal prayers are just there as a help. To help us express our sentiments with God. To help us communicate with God and with His saints, with our guardian angels. But we have to mean what we say. Otherwise, we're just babbling, rattling off words that don't mean anything. We're not only wasting our time, wasting our uh, uh, energies uh, for it, because it's not going to achieve anything as far as God is concerned. There has to be sincerity in what we say, in what we pray about. Even if we are using vocal prayers for doing so, we have to mean every word. Well, if we can, you know, we, we get so distracted with many things, right? But at least we have to put in some sincerity in what we are saying. Okay, then he goes on to teach them what is now known as the Lord's Prayer. And he says, This is how you are to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. So first there is adoration as part of the prayer. Okay? Acknowledging uh, God to be our Father. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now we petition. Prayer is an act of petitioning. We ask God the Father to give us what we need. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And our Lord concludes his teaching here by saying, 
If you forgive men their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive, if you do not forgive men, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. Wow. Our Lord puts a condition to our prayer. Eh? Our Lord puts a condition for our prayer. And what is that condition? The condition is we have to forgive other people who have offended us. See? If we don't find it in our hearts to forgive other people, our Lord is saying, well, <laughs> what's your business trying to ask God to forgive you your own offenses towards Him? Okay? Doesn't make sense. So first, learn to forgive people around you. Your friends, your family, your colleagues, whoever it is around you that might have offended you one way or another, find it in your heart to forgive them their offenses towards you. Then God, in His mercy, will forgive you your offenses towards Him. It's interesting how our Lord always uses our relationships with other people as a standard, a measure against which to measure our own desires and our own yearnings and petitions that we bring to God the Father. So, for example, he says, the golden rule, do unto others what you want others to do unto you. So if you want to be a recipient of good favors from other people, well, first do it to them. Then they will reciprocate and do it to you. What else? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Okay? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Do to them what you rather would like to do unto yourself. And then now he says, well, you want forgiveness from your sins? Are you really sincere in asking for forgiveness from your sins? Then forgive others first. Forgive others first and then your Heavenly Father will forgive you. So forgiving others is not always an easy task though. Right? It is so, so difficult to forgive other people. And I think we all have experiences as far as that is concerned. It's hard to forgive other people who have offended us, who have hurt us, who have done us bad, who have done us an injustice, right? Or what we feel to be an injustice done to me. How dare you do this to me? How dare you offend me in this way, right? That's how we think when it comes to people who happen to offend us. Well, you know why? Because what is making you think that way and feel that way is your pride. You're too proud. You, you, you think so highly about yourself. You think that you are somebody that does not deserve to get hurt and to be offended by lower creatures beneath you, right? We think that we are so high up there that we are untouchables and nobody should ever, ever offend us in any way. We get hurt. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I feel bad that I'm treated this way. Well, that is because of our pride. Pride, pride, pride. So what does it take to forgive? Number one, humility. Humility. We have to have the humility to recognize. We have to have the humility to recognize that we are not perfect. We too have our own shortcomings. We too have our own sinfulness. We too offend God to begin with. And we too do a lot of harm to other people around us. It takes a lot of humility to recognize that. To realize we are not perfect. We commit the same infractions, the same bad things. That the same, same shortcomings that other people commit. So we cannot be the first ones to... You know, 
shut them off and say, you know, I cannot forgive you. No? But, well, be humble. Recognize that we ourselves have our own shortcomings. And that is the first step to forgiving others. The second step is to muster enough courage to do it. It takes courage to forgive other people. You know why? Because sometimes we tend to wall up. We tend to defend ourselves and think that ah, it is beneath me to forgive others because it's a sign of weakness. It will, it, it will seem like I'm defeated because I wasn't able to keep my, my status, my higher ground status up. I am now stooping beneath my level in order to stoop to these people who have offended me. I'm not anymore taking the moral high ground and I need to humble myself to say, okay, I accept your apology or I forgive you. No, you see, on the contrary, it takes a lot of courage to forgive other people. It takes a lot of uh, understanding here that, you know, uh, um, it's, it's precisely the opposite effect. It's precisely a sign of strength. It's precisely a sign of self-knowledge uh, and security that you can uh, 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 take yourself to forgive other people, that you find that strength within you, that inner strength within you to forgive other people. Okay? It is a sign of courage. And thirdly, it's also an act of charity to forgive other people. And you know why? Because many times the people who offend us don't really mean to offend us. Maybe they made a mistake saying a, a silly word to us. They made a mistake or out of heat of uh, uh, passion or aggression or whatever it is or anger, they said something bad about us. Many times they don't really mean what they have done what they have said, in whatever manner they have offended us, many times they don't even mean that. And they regret what they have done to us. And they can only hope that we actually forgive them so that they will finally have peace. See? So that they will finally remove that burden off their chest and, the, you know, and, and have a sigh of relief that you forgave them for the unintended offense that they caused to you. And so forgiving them is an act of charity to them. It's an act of love. Okay? That is why the greatest love of all is what our Lord has offered to each and every one of us for dying on the cross. It's an act of love because we have no way to even repay the damage of our own sins. But God, in His love, in His mercy, has already forgiven us way before we even committed our first sin. No greater act of love and charity could beat that. He laid down His life for His friends, us, to forgive us already in advance of what He knows we're going to commit. Right? That is the act of love that we are going to commemorate this season of Lent. So, this is a very good time, the season of Lent, to learn to forgive. To learn with humility, with courage, with charity, to forgive other people. Their offenses towards us. Okay? Now, I recommend three things we can do. To start the process of forgiveness that we should carry out this then. Number one, pray. Number two, pray. Number three, pray. The first prayer is for ourselves. That we be humble. That we have the courage to forgive. Let's pray for ourselves, first of all. Let's ask our Lord to give us enough humility to recognize our own sinfulness. Let's ask our Lord to give us the courage to forgive others. Second, pray for them. 
Pray for these people that we have not learned to forgive. Let's pray for them so that by the time we are ready to approach them and tell them, I forgive you, they will be able to accept it and we can have a good reconciliation with them. Okay. And number three, pray that, the, that you and that person that you are reconciling with would heal, would heal and have a longer lasting relationship of friendship and intimacy with each other. So a lot of this really involves prayer and the very same prayer of forgiveness that our Lord taught us, the Our Father, could be a very nice instrument because he says there, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Okay? Let's ask our Father God to help us learn to forgive. Okay, that's it for us. Bye-bye. Where is my Eva? Are we going to say goodbye, Eva? Are we? <laughs> okay. She's lazy this morning. Well, goodbye, everybody. Have a good day and uh, hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye.